I had to do another video regarding the blood moons because there is a misunderstanding of the prophetic significance of the blood moons. Now, some unbelievers think that a full lunar eclipse or a blood moon is a sign that the world is going to come to an end. And they even say that Christians are going around trying to scare people saying the world is going to come to an end. Now, that is not true. True Christians don't go around trying to scare people saying, the world is coming to an end. The world is coming to an end. Run for your lives. Save yourselves. That is not true. And anybody who claims to be a Christian and is going around trying to scare people with prophetic events is really not a Christian, okay? God has not, God did not give us the spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7. And it is ungodly for Christians to try to scare uh, unbelievers and even our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, with prophetic events. You know, it's, it's ungodly to, to do something like that. Now, when it comes to the end of the world, that is not going to happen, okay? And that's not what a blood moon uh, means, okay? A blood moon is all about Israel. All about Israel. It's Israel. Uh, it's, it's God letting the world know that an extraordinary event is going to happen in Israel or a time of great distress is coming to Israel. That's what it's about. It's all about Israel. It's God speaking to us through a major extremely rare celestial event letting us know that something is about to happen to Israel this is not about the end of the world and that's not going to happen okay the end of the world that that's not going to happen according to Ecclesiastes 1 4 which says one generation passes away and another generation comes but the earth abides forever there's additional scriptures that talks about the world not ending in Ephesians 3:21. And Isaiah 45 17 which talks about world without end you know we can tell the unbelievers that all day and they still won't understand what we're saying and it's all because they are not believers in Christ and they are unable to discern uh, spiritual things you know so because of the fact that they can't understand it, they'll, they'll just assume that we're just saying that the world is coming to an end, and that's that's not true. Now, in Genesis chapter 7, verses 17 through 24, God destroyed the earth with water, okay? So the earth was destroyed before because um, of sin and wickedness. And in Revelation chapter 6 through 17, it talks about God's 21 judgments. You know, God is going to destroy the earth again. And it also talks about Satan's wrath on Christians and Jews. Now, God has to destroy the earth because of sin, wickedness, and the works of Satan. That's what God did back in Genesis, uh, in Noah's day, and that's what he's going to do in the future. He is going to destroy the earth again because of sin, wickedness, and the works of Satan. But it doesn't mean that the earth will cease to exist. You know, that's where the unbelievers get it twisted. You know, they, uh, they'll they say, like, well, Christians say that God is going to destroy the earth again. So, like, does that mean that the earth will cease to exist? You know, they'll say something like that. And no, that's not what it means. You know, God has to cleanse the earth and the second heaven. And, you know, that's already in the process of happening. God is already in the process of cleansing the earth, you know, through uh, birth pains. So it's already happening right before our eyes. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 7, 10, 11, 12, and 13, it talks about God destroying the earth with fire. Now, verse 7 says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, 
against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's what we're looking for. The true, the true believers, we're looking for the new heavens and a new earth. And John talked about that in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. John said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the, and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. See, the only way that God will bring the new Jerusalem, which is in the third heaven, the only way that he will bring that down to, the, to earth is after he has already, you know, destroyed the earth, you know, through the 21 judgments and through the, the ultimate cleansing, which is destroying the earth with fire and the second heaven. And then that's when everything will be made new, brand new. And then that's when God will bring down the uh, new Jerusalem. So I just had to make a video about this, you know, because there's a misunderstanding going on uh, when it comes to the blood moons. You know, people think it's a sign of the end of the world, and it's it's not about the end of the world. It's all about Israel. It's about something big that is going to happen to Israel. You know, so just had to just had to do a video about this and I hope it, you know, it helps people out to get a better understanding of what's going on in these last days. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please do so. Please watch my video, which is titled, Now is the Day of Salvation, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior.